Hi everyone! So today I'm going to film what I'm going to call my late late favorites. And I know these are more commonly called like current favorites or whatever, but I like how lately favorite sounds because it kind of sounds like monthly favorites. So I'm going to stick with that. I didn't really have enough favorites to make a video for December or for January or really for February because I've all just kind of been wearing the same stuff. I haven't really been discovering anything new or at least not too many things new so I'm going to start out with the makeup portion of this literally favorite. First thing I'm going to talk about is the Kiko Long Lasting Stick Eyeshadow in 05. This is such a pretty rose quartz color but it comes out just the most beautiful rosy taupe shade and I am absolutely in love with it and as you may or may not know Kiko is beautiful, beautiful makeup for kind of around drugstore prices. It is a European brand, so there is that, that little bit of exchange when it comes to going from euros or pounds to dollars, but it's still pretty cheap. I think that I got it for like six bucks. I do think it was on sale. I don't remember what the full price was, but it is a beautiful formula. It gives you a little while to blend it out. Not too long, I'd say. Definitely less than a minute, probably more like 30 to 45 seconds to kind of play with it, and then it is stuck. It is not going anywhere. It is really, really long lasting, and it just has the most beautiful shimmer and the most beautiful sheen to it, and I really love it. I think it looks excellent on brown eyes, and I'm definitely going to be getting more of those Kiko sticks when I'm back in my hometown. Next is the Urban Decay Shadow in Space Cowboy, and this is just like the prettiest, glitteriest, shimmeriest, sort of nudie beige color. It doesn't give that much color off, it's mostly the beautiful silver glitter that it has in it. It is so beautiful, and it's not the kind of glitter where you feel glitter. You know, it is so incredibly smooth, and I just like, wow. It's so awesome. The texture is kind of similar to the Lorac, like the liquid glitter eyeshadow things to where you don't really feel it. It doesn't have that, that much of a texture to it. A lot of times glitter can get a gritty texture to it and I really, really don't like it. But this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. I've been putting it kind of like on the inner half of my eye and it just looks absolutely stunning. It's the kind of glitter to where it's not like, woo, Mardi Gras, but it's just like, pretty classy, adds a little bit of glam and a little bit of like an ethereal look to whatever you're wearing and I just, I absolutely love it and I think it's stunning. Next are two MAC Studio Fix concealers. One is in NW20 and the other is in NW15. The NW15 is about uh, like half a shade too light for me and the NW20 is like half a shade too dark for me. Usually I can go with the NW20 except in winter time which is when I just get my absolute palest. So what I've been doing is kind of putting the NW15 in my darkest spaces under my eye. I've been putting the NW15 in the inner corner of this area here and about to there. And then I've been putting the NW20 over that. Not using a ton of it because this is the kind of product that creases if you use too much, but usually with the NW20 I go over what I did, bring it out to here a little bit, and then bring it down here in that little like highlighted triangle shape that everybody seems to love. And I've been using the Studio Fix, Studio Finish, yeah, the Studio Finish concealers for I think about 10 years now, always been an NW20, and then recently I decided that I wanted to get a little bit brighter with my under eye area because I do suffer from incredibly dark circles and it's really lame and makes me sad. And the next makeup thing, it comes in the Urban Decay Anarchy face case and it is their bottom section which is, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, not blind you all, it's the blushes. They are just absolutely gorgeous. This is kind of more of a peachy tone blush. I'm wearing it right now. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a pink, but it looks crazy, crazy, crazy pink in the pan, but it's really not that bright on the face. It just adds a nice wash of color, and then there's this beautiful golden toned highlighter, and I have been using the three of these kind of depending on my look throughout 
the past couple months. I love using the peachy toned darker blush for the winter months. It just kind of, I don't know, it looks really pretty on the skin. And it's the kind of color where I don't really need to contour because it is a little bit darker and it kind of contours for me. So I really like that. But then when I want to brighten up my face and just make it look like I've either, you know, been outside or if I'm just having kind of a dull, sad skin day, I'll go with the brighter pink. And these are incredibly pigmented blushes. Like you barely need any on your blush brush but they do blend out really beautifully. So if you've used a little bit too much, you can kind of either go over it with your hand or go over it with your foundation brush, whichever you feel more comfortable with. And it just buffs out to a really pretty color. I am a blush girl. I like to put on a good amount of blush. I hope that I don't look too 80s half the time, but being a pale person and being a pale person that doesn't really flush that easily, I tend to load up on the blush, so ooh, that's kind of a bit of my drawback. <laughs> Next I have the Essie Nail Polish in Prima Ballerina, and this is just the prettiest nude. It's like a pinky golden nude. It's kind of like a true, true nude. And this is definitely a three-coater if you want it to be opaque. Sometimes though, it's really nice to just have a sheer wash of that blush color on your nails. Just It just makes everything look so sophisticated and of course I'm not wearing it today. This is Essie's accrued interest but it's just so pretty. It's just so pretty. It makes you look so delicate and so dainty and yeah kind of like a prima ballerina and it's you know that perfect tutu color and I just think it's stunning and being an Essie nail polish it's a great formula with any nude that color, you're really not going to notice it if it chips, so that's another reason why I like it because it's not that much lighter than my natural nail color. Only I'd say maybe one, one and a half shades lighter than my natural nail color, so it doesn't show up that much when it chips, which is always a godsend and which I always appreciate because I'm one of those girls who I let my nails go a couple days after they chip. I, I just, I can't be that on the ball. <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying, which just sounds kind of crappy. But anyways, now onto skin things. These two things were both in my winter skincare routine that I will link down below. But the first thing I wanted to talk about is the Nourish Organic Renewing Eye Cream with Avocado and Argan for normal to dry skin. And I got this little baby in an Ipsy bag and it has, you know, defied my expectations. It has gone so above and beyond to what I expected. I thought, oh yeah, another eye cream, whatever. I've never really been one for just sticking with the kind of eye creams that are moisturizing. I always want one that, you know, is either gonna brighten my under eyes or help with wrinkles that I have, which aren't there that I imagine. But this one is just really good at moisturizing my under eye area, at making it feel very nourished, as the brand said. And just, it makes my concealer go on absolutely beautiful, and it doesn't, I don't get those weird, icky, dry, flaky bits at the end of the day like I used to. This just keeps everything happy, and yeah, and it's been a tough winter. It's been a very dry winter, so having anything that makes my skin feel happier and more nourished is always appreciated. And onto something that does make my skin feel happier and more nourished, it is the Acure 100% Certified Organic Argan Oil. And I've always used this to take off my eye makeup because I like using an oil to take off my mascara. I feel that it nourishes my eyelashes and just makes it feel a whole lot better. And you know, regular ones, they kind of irritate my under eye area, they irritate my eyes, and my eyelashes end up falling out. And with using the Argan Oil, I've actually found that my eyelashes are growing in thicker and you know, staying around a little while so they're able to grow longer. But this winter, I have been using it on my skin. I just feel like I need a little extra boost of moisture underneath my moisturizer, and I do use a really great heavy moisturizer, but I just felt like I needed something a little bit more, so I was using that as a serum. I have now switched over to a different serum, but the Argan Oil was absolutely awesome for while I used it, and it helped with some of my acne scars, and just to kind of give my skin an overall more smooth appearance, and I, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it, it was really nice. On to a candle. This is the Patty Wax Library Edgar Allan Poe candle with cardamom, absinthe, and sandalwood, and it comes in this absolutely adorable 
little copper travel container. How fucking cute is this? Oh my god. This was given to me for Christmas by my friend Lauren, who yeah, knows me. She knows me like no one else knows me. And oh, it just smells so good. Oh my god. It kind of has a bit of like a green apple smell to it, kind of, maybe? Maybe I'm just crazy? I don't know, but I think it smells amazing. It kind of smells fresh, but spicy at the same time, and it burns beautifully, and it is a soy candle, which I try not to buy anything that isn't a soy candle because you're kind of getting crap out in the air that you don't want. So, soy candles for the win, and I absolutely love this. I'm gonna keep this little tin to put like earrings in or, or little trinkets or what have you, but oh, I might have to buy this in the bigger size because it's just, it smells so good. Although you don't get the cute little copper tin, but maybe I'll just buy another maybe one so I can just have the copper tin, why not? All right, next I have one clothing item and it is these fuzzy, Beauty socks. <laughs> they're from Target and I got them last year. They're, I think they're knee high socks. Let me compare it. Yeah, about to the knee socks at the very least. And I have been wearing these with my snow boots. And not only are they keeping my feet super, super duper warm, and if I want to wear leggings or a pair of pants that are a little bit thinner, it's fine because I'm kind of protected from the snow by those. And I've just kind of been scrunching them down so that they look cute with my boots, but I've been wearing the crap out of those things. And it's funny because I got them and they sat in my drawer. I got them last year, last winter. And I don't mean last winter as in like winter 2014. I mean winter as in like winter 2013 or maybe like January or February of 2014. But I mean like a while ago last winter, not this winter, last winter. <laughs> and they just sat in my drawer forever and recently I've just been like, you know what, these look really comfy and I have them. Why am I not wearing them? So I wore them and now I'm friggin' obsessed with them. Next, I have a book. I have this book. And it is Yes Please by Amy Poehler. And this was given to me, again, by my friend Lauren for Valentine's Day. And I find it very fitting because the character that Amy Poehler plays on Parks and Rec, Leslie Nope, makes a huge deal about Valentine's Day and she's kind of who brought Valentine's Day to my attention and this was the first year that I celebrated it with my friend Lauren. And I like went through this book so friggin' fast. I got it and I read it and like I was three days in and I was like, oh crap. I am more than halfway done with this book. I don't want it to end, so let me stop reading it. <laughs> and I've stopped reading it because, like I said, I don't want it to end. I don't want it to be over yet. But I'm on page 307, and there are only 327 pages. So I only have 20 pages left of this amazing book, but it is awesome. I love the way that she wrote it. It has a little bit of a different format and at every like chapter there is there are these things and I love them. They're just like a cool poppy way to break up the book. And you know she has these different segments and some of them are written like a regular old book book and then other things are kind of like lists. And one of the cool things that she did was she wrote kind of like about her birth that she got from her mother, the story that she got from her mom, the part that she got from her dad, and then she gives you this little section to ask your parents what it was like when you were born, and you write it in there, and the book kind of becomes part of you as well, and I like interactive books like that. I think they're really cool, but it's filled with a whole bunch of pictures, and like here she has a haiku about plastic surgery. <laughs> And I just love the way that it breaks up the book. It always makes it very, very exciting for the reader when you kind of have something a little different in there. And she has this whole collage of when she was doing the Upright, Citig Citigan, the Upright Citizens Brigade. And I just think, I love it. I love it when authors include pictures in their memoirs. Is this a memoir? I don't know. I don't really 
really know why books are called what they are. Like, what makes it a novel? What makes it a memoir? What makes it a book? <laughs> Those are all the physical things I have to show you guys, but I have three non-physical things to show you, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm filming on right now. My beautiful Canon EOS Rebel T3i, which my amazing boyfriend got me for Christmas. I'm going to put in a little picture right here. It's me. It's my camera noise. I don't even know what a camera sounds like anymore because we, no one takes pictures like that anymore. It's just like beep, or it makes no noise because people turn it off because people use their phones all the time. Anyways, I'm in love with this camera. It's been really getting me into taking actual pictures, you know, being a little bit more artsy, trying to find the beauty in every day and the beauty in everything, and I've been really liking it. You know, I took a couple pictures of a candle the other day, and I brought in a little a little tree sprig from outside because I was like this will make this a lot prettier for myself taking pictures. <laughs> so yeah, I've absolutely been loving this camera. It's making the quality of my videos a lot nicer and next I have to work on lighting and filming space, <laughs> but we'll get to that. The next thing is a television show, Friends. Of course Friends. Friends came to Netflix and everybody started binge watching Friends. It's been awesome. I'm already on season 9 and I've had to stop watching it for a little while because I was getting through it too fast. It's just like with the book. I was going too fast and I didn't want it to end so I stopped for a little bit but you know, you don't really have to say much about Friends. Pretty much everybody knows what it is. And I used to watch this religiously when I was younger. I would watch it every night, you know, it would be reruns and then when it would be on once a week, I would watch it then, and I cried along with everybody else during all the wonderful moments, but this time, when Chandler proposed to Monica, and sorry if you didn't watch it and I just spoiled something for you, I cried like a friggin' baby. I'm like, oh god, oh no. Just crying about everything all the time. I like it. I love Friends, as most people do. And the last thing that I have been absolutely in love with is this. It's so addicting. Friggin' trivia crack. The music. Oh. You started the music. And then you stopped the music. That was that was rude. I got super crazy obsessed with this game in January. Like it's not even funny. Just like out of my mind. Super obsessed, can't even handle Trivia Crack. I don't know if it stands for crack as in like, you cracked the code, you know, you, you got the question right, or crack as in like the drug, but I feel like it's like the drug. I couldn't stop for a while there. Like I was going, hey, I'm on some Trivia Crack. And I was just like, first I was feeling really good about myself because I was winning all these games. I'm like, oh my God, like these questions are really easy. Like this is awesome. And then I started losing like every game and started getting the most randomly ridiculous questions where the phrasing of the question wasn't right and I would report it because you can do that and I'm totally that person who's like, oh, I didn't understand your question so clearly it's wrong. And sometimes the answers are wrong and you answer correctly and you don't get your, your turn back even if it's wrong. But that's my mini rant about trivia crack. I hope you guys enjoyed my lately favorites. If you did, please give it the good old thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below if you liked any of the things that I talked about today or what your lately favorites are. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye!